Guillermo Marconi, the inventor of the wireless telegraph, is quoted as saying, The coming wireless era will make war impossible because it will make war ridiculous. He thought that if people had better communication, there would be no more misunderstandings, that they could talk their way out of war. He was wrong. If anything else, ease of communication has helped facilitate war. It's funny, right? An invention meant to bring people closer together only served to push them farther apart. They're concerned about social media. Social media. Social media. Social media. Social media. media. Do you imagine something like that? They chose to connect online rather than to connect with a human being. Well, I'm getting good at these intros, huh? But it's a good question. We are more connected to people than ever. Like, if a thousand years ago I needed to have a long conversation with someone from China, I would need to, like, get a boat, get a fleet of men, I would need so much money, months of preparation, and someone would probably die on the way. If I needed to do that today, I need to press, like, what, three buttons? There's been a there's been a bit of an update here. And yet, despite quite literally having the world in the palm of our hands, loneliness has become an epidemic. That is sounds like a complete contradiction why is that let's discuss yeah I'm, I'm i'm getting really good at this huh my mom would be so proud if she knew what youtube was if you've ever been at a party where there's a crowd of people you know that you can still feel lonely even when you're surrounded because being alone and loneliness are two different things. Loneliness isn't lack of proximity to people. Loneliness is how you feel about your relationships. Because if you're surrounded by people, but you think nobody cares, that's when you feel lonely. It's how you feel about those relationships. So you can have a million contacts in your phone and follow everybody within a 10 mile radius. But riddle me this, Batman, do they care about you? They might not, but there are people out there who would. So how do you find them? Social media and technology in general are a good tool for this, but they are not the solution. Like if you wanted to build a house, you would use a hammer, but you can't live in the hammer, all right? Like the, the tool is not the solution. You can't live in a hammer. I Is this a good analogy? It might be, I, I'm not, I don't know. Because social media can feel like the real thing, but it's not. There are a few key elements of in-person communication you simply cannot replicate online. Case in point, vulnerability. The closer you become with someone, the more vulnerable you get. But being vulnerable online is super contained. You can think about what you wanna say, you can write it out beforehand. You can edit it before you put it out. You can ignore negative feedback. And if it goes horribly wrong, you delete it. But that's not what happens in real life. When you're vulnerable in real life, one of two things happens. You either really bond with the person you're getting vulnerable with and you just this sparks like a new friendship or they say, okay, that was kind of random. And then a part of you dies that day. But it's okay because that's what real communication is. There's risks and consequences. That's just how the game works. And if you remove the real consequences, you can never really get a real connection. And that's just one example of how online communication can never fully replace real communication, all right? You can't live in a hammer, and you can quote me on that. Have you ever seen Core Core on TikTok? Um, the easiest way I can describe it is it is an edit of like movies and TV shows, news broadcasts, pictures, anything uh, of being sad or saddening things. And some of them tackle like loneliness and feeling alone. And that's not a bad thing, it's not. But uh, Im imagine this, let's say that you like, favorite, comment, repost, whatever on one of these videos. And because of that, the algorithm is like, I see. And then all of a sudden, your entire feed is just these type of lonely, I'm alone, loneliness is, I'm sad, all that for hours at a day. Yeah, that that's fine and dandy. Um, but let me ask you this, D does that help? You see, and that's the problem. And there's this weird thing that happens when people who already feel lonely just watch stuff like this over and over again, including myself. You just start to get this idea and this feeling of, wow. I'm so misunderstood. Nobody gets me. I'm such a loner. Everybody else is dumb for understanding me. Like what? This doesn't make any sense. I'm so cool and misunderstood. I'm so conflicted. Alone.
I'm gonna go stare longingly at a window when it's raining outside. And to be clear, that's not me making fun of anybody. That's me accurately describing my personality from middle to high school. I was insufferable. But you get my point. Dwelling on this stuff like takes you from the mindset of, I'm in a bad spot and I need to try and figure out how to get out of it. And it puts you in the mindset of, I'm going to constantly remind myself of how bad of a spot I'm in. And to be a thousand percent clear, this isn't me saying <laughs> loneliness. Oh, you stupid little person. Why don't you just go meet people? It's so, it's so simple. If you're lonely, make friends. Are you homeless? <laughs> just buy a house. It's not that hard, people. Come on. I'm not doing that. Oh my goodness, I'm not doing that. But it's undeniable that constantly consuming content that reminds you of the very thing that makes you miserable is simply not healthy. And also, it's a little bit concerning to take something that you don't enjoy and to consume media that kind of subtly convinces you that you're a little cool and different and not like other girls for feeling this way it's not it's not cool we shouldn't we shouldn't be glorifying this this isn't good again i'm including myself in this 13 to 17 year old me was a bummer there's this thought experiment I heard on TikTok a while ago. I don't remember who came up with it. I'm sorry. It was this idea that imagine somebody presented you with a book. In this book is everything anyone has ever said about you. And you have two options. You can either read it or not. But if you read it, you have to finish it. And it doesn't matter how messed up it gets or how hurt you start to feel. You have to read every last word. Would you read the book? Now, if you're like most people, you're probably thinking, good golly gumdrops, that sounds terrible. Here's the point. You don't need to know everything. But social media gives you the power to do that, and sometimes we just can't resist. It is very easy to find out when your friends are hanging out without you. They can post something on Instagram, update their locket. You can track their location on your phone. That is like an idea that we don't think about too oft like often enough. That is like slightly weird, right? I'm not crazy. It's also easier to snoop and to stalk and to compare your life with people you don't even know. And you know, it's you just can't help but doing it. But seeing that stuff doesn't make you feel good. Like if you see somebody who hangs out with their four close personal friends, it makes you feel bad about only having one close personal friend. And subconsciously, it'll make you start viewing you or even your friend as less than. That's not good. It's even easier to find out when people are talking about you behind your back. And, okay, this is gonna sound bad, but hear me out. Do you need to know that? Yeah, they're talking about you and they probably shouldn't be doing that, but did you need to know that? Like, it makes me think of that uh, Andy Woodhull joke. Sometimes my wife asks me to help teach the kids things that I don't believe in. Don't talk about people behind their back. And I don't like that because it's been my life experience that that is the number one place that you should talk about people. <laughs> I agree, it's bad to talk about people behind their back and let them find out about it. You guys aren't laughing a lot, but are you really telling me you've never talked about someone behind their back, they never found out about it, and everyone just had a positive experience? We have the ability, like no other time period, to find out all of this stuff. But do you need to know it? Do you need to open the book? Does it make you feel better? No. No. You don't need to know everything. Oh, and on the subject of comparison, um, nothing is real. Uh, for some reason, for this point, the first thing that came to mind, um, was Ellen. You remember Ellen, right? Uh, De, De Janeiro. Well, Alan DiGiorno had a great reputation as being the lovable, kooky daytime host that got along with everybody and everyone loved her. Except, wait, no, that's a lie. I'm pretty sure no one liked her, I think. I'm gonna be so honest. My main source of knowledge of this entire debacle is that one Drew Gooden video. Hey guys. So if this is a little inaccurate, I'm sorry. But to my knowledge, uh, most of what we saw on the tube was incorrect. And Ellen and everyone who worked on her show pretty much sucked. The, the best example of this I can think of was that time Dakota Jones came on air and told Ellen in front of her studio audience, I didn't think you liked me. How was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. But I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who doesn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> Watching Ellen trying to save that is just... 
It's it's funny, but it's a little sad. But it, it's funny. Of course I like you. You knew I liked you. What was the point of that? Oh yeah, nothing's real, N none of it. We love to compare ourselves to people online who we perceive to have a perfect life, but we constantly forget that most of what we put online is the highlight reel of our lives because if we put our real lives on, that's boring. Like somehow everyone is lonely, yet we're the only ones that are lonely. That is a contradiction that sounds perfectly illogical on paper and yet somehow it makes sense in our dumb little human minds. Someone should probably do something about that. But almost none of it is true. Everybody, at the very least, has bad days. Some people have really bad lives. And most of us kind of fall somewhere in the middle and forget about the outliers and everybody else. It's not great, but remembering this fact will definitely make things better. Nothing is real. So, in conclusion, Throw away your phone, you're going to die alone. I'm completely kidding. Don't do that. Technology is not the enemy. It is a great tool. Remember the hammer thing? That was a great quote, but it is not the solution. It is an aid. You have to know how to keep it in its place. And loneliness is a thing that can't be solved with a single or multiple devices. I am not gonna sit here and act like I'm a therapist or something that can fix loneliness. Uh, you probably should see a therapist if that's something that's really persisting. I'm just a, a dumb guy on the internet. I go to community college. Don't listen to me. What I do know is that if you want to beat loneliness, you have to play the game in the real world. So go do that. M maybe, maybe take a break from your phone. Have fun. Do well. I'm proud of you. If you like the video, and like the video and subscribe because Please, I'm gonna start saying that again. I like that quote. All right, bye.